Welcome back to the next video in our action RPG where we're going to set up um, the player being defeated. So right now, when we run out of health, as you can see here, nothing happens. And actually, we can keep on going negative uh, and the adventure continues. Uh, but what we want to do is basically lock the player into their defeated animation and they have to maybe press the space bar to respawn or or something. Uh, so let's take a look at actually setting this up. We can hit, well, first we need a new variable inside of the game manager. Now I will say that uh, we've already done the sprite work that we'll need to do for this video in the previous video. Um, so if you haven't set up the slain animation for the player, you will need to do that. So um, we do need a variable here to indicate if the player is slain. So I'm going to call this stats slain. And this will be a Boolean as to whether or not the player is defeated. So obviously it starts true. And we are going to want to update the player and update the state of this based on our health. So we're going to go over to the player and go to our step event. And inside of here is where we want to put our checks for our hit points. So we'll, we can even improve this comment set depth, movement, um, check, health. Although I will say traditionally um, we tend to do our health checks in end step after everything has already happened for that frame. So maybe we should go move this to end step. So this is where we will check our health. So in end step, we want to see if global.manager.statshp is ever less than or equal to zero and we are not slain yet. So global.manager.slain is false. So if this means that we have not run this method yet. So first up, let's set slain to true. It's like a super stun. You, you, we won't be able to move. We won't be able to attack. Um, Global.manager.stats slain is equal to true, which means we I mistyped that. Um, then we want to disable attack. So similar to what we did before. Uh, this is local to the player. So this is just attack enabled equals false. Um, eventually we'll want to come back and drop our inventory, maybe. Um, animate the player's defeat. So we'll say animate. Uh, we don't need a direction and we'll, the, we will be calling the animate state dot slain, which might not exist yet, so we're going to have to go and create that. And then lock the animations. Anim locked is true. That's a local variable on the player as well. So uh, we need to go create a new um, enum for enumerator for slain. And then also we probably need to set the slain animations here. So let's do that in player while we're still in player. Now, for the sake of simplicity, it's going to just be easier for us to specify the same animation four times for each direction, rather than just try to code it so that um, it only <laughs> so that it only does one of them, uh, like differentiating between different types of animations. That this only has one. I think it's easier just to copy and paste all four. All right, so now we need to go over to our scripts and our animation script and add another one here 
for slain. And then we need to set up the logic, which really isn't going to take much work. Um, we just have to add that to our list of commands here. And while we're here, we might as well just throw hurts on here. So if we call for the hurt state, um, we can then run the hurt animation. And if we are calling for the slain state, we can just call the slain animation. Easy to update. We don't have to change much else here. Um, so there is going to be one more change that we're going to need to make, but this should actually get us to the point where we'll fall over. So we can exit out of here, and then most of the rest of the work is going to be back on player and the manager. So now when I run out of health, we kind of sort of get a death animation but not really, and we can still move. So first up, that thing is scrolling way too fast, so perhaps we need to adjust the frames per second on it. So that is under our player animation for slain, and you can see that it's still 30 frames per second. Let's drop that to four, and then back inside of player, on the animation end, we were using this kind of if statement to keep us from looping on an attack. We could do the same thing for being slain. So we could just add an or here and say, or if we're slain, just freeze us at the end of that animation, just go back to that last frame only. Uh, and then that will keep us from scrolling through that uh, death animation a million times. So with those changes, now when we run out of health, we fall over and we're good, but we can still move. Uh, attack was disabled. We can still pick up items. We can still zone. And because this is a brand new player, um, it's already still slain. So it didn't trigger the death animation again. So let's lock the player's ability to do anything once they've entered the slain state. Right now, there isn't a whole lot aside from movement. So what we would want to do here is just say if global.manager.statsslain is false, then allow the use of the movement command. And that will solve pretty much all of our problems. Um, so when we run this, and then we run out of health now, can't move, uh, and that's really about it. Um, so we've managed to be able to kind of um, cause the player to become defeated here. Now, what about respawning? Um, because this would be awful if we just had to restart the game every time a monster brings us to zero hit points. Uh, that would be painful, to say the least. So let's get some text on the screen that implies um, that we can hit the space bar to retry or to respawn. So that's going to be a job of the game manager. And really in that large draw GUI um, method, right underneath the stuff for drawing the text for our current health bar, we're going to add another section for our slain text. So if um, stats slain is true, then we want to draw some text on the screen. 
So I am going to steal this code because I'm going to switch back to that health bar font. You could change fonts if you want, but I'm just gonna use that same. Um, here, this will just be called, I, get, I think just text. And actually, we don't need that text, but let's compute the middle of the screen. So middle X is camera underscore get view width. And this is getting the camera's um, size. And then we're gonna do the same for getting the height, which would be our Y variable. So camera get view height, view underscore camera. Then the text that we, so then we're gonna set that up here in this draw text. So we're gonna draw it at middle X, middle Y. And the text that we want to draw is press space to respawn. So let's see if we get this text. So we can hit play. Uh, we deplete our health. And you can see that it says in white, plus press space to respawn. Now, we don't have any sort of set, we don't have anything set up for that to do anything, um, but we can do that really quickly. So that's going to involve us essentially reloading the level. So I think the, the cleverest way to do this is to just ask the game for a map load and all of the, the variables for where we were going should still be the same so it'll it'll bring us back to the last map we loaded into so let's add an event for the let's do key up on space so this is the respawn the player stuff Um, so if date stats slain is true and we press the space bar, then we want to reset the hit points by saying stats underscore HP equals stats underscore HP max. Um, unset slain so the stats slain equals false now this is something that we'll, we'll consider in the future so this kind of falls under like a to do thing here uh, I did mention the desire to drop the inventory so what we could do is save the state of the room of anything that we dropped so so if we dropped our sword or something we don't want to cause the game to just eat that sword on the map reload so we'll come back and we'll add in the ability for it to and, th and this will be fairly complex um coming back to do this some some way to save the state of the room so that after we reload the map, we can restore the state of the room. And so we'll just call map load. And map load, oh, not a method, map load equals true. Um, and that's going to then trigger this wonderful method that we had here. And all it does is just reload the room. It just says go back to that room and we essentially start the room from scratch. Um, all of our transition data about how we got there is still the same. Um, the only thing that we run the risk of losing is any items that are dropped on the ground. And our inventory will also persist. Um, so if you picked up the bow, the bow will respawn and you can pick it up again, then die and then pick it up again.
and die and then pick it up again. So that's, you know, not ideal, but um, we'll handle that when we deal with dropping our inventory, which will be the next video, um, where we kind of overhaul how the item system works a little bit. Um, and I'm going to break that into a separate video because it is a little technical and doesn't fit the theme for this one. So with these changes, um, we should now be able to respawn. So if I'm back at the start and I lower my health, I die. Um, inventory. If I hit space, I come back and I still have that bow. So if I pick up another one, now I have two. But if I decide to go off to another map, and then I die. Um, then if I hit space, I come back on this map. So whatever map you were defeated on is where you reload back in. Now we could, and you, you could very easily see how this would play out. Um, you could retool this so that we essentially restart the whole game if you wanted to that however you want to handle restarting the player is going to be contained here so we could go back to the start um we could just instantiate a new player not reload the room so there's a lot of different approaches that we could take i i felt that reloading the room is the fairest um if you get halfway through a challenge and you fail you want that to reset. There, that just saves you so much headache. You want to be fresh room state when you walk in there. So that does wrap up the ability for the player to get defeated. So this will then give us something to go off of once we start putting enemies in the world. So we'll do one more video, well, one more topic, whether or not it's gonna take multiple videos. Uh, one more video of retooling the inventory to be a little bit more friendly with how we pick up items because we have this bow but what if we want to pick up any item well why not just generalize that to a much easier inventory system so we're going to look at that and then that will then make it easier for us to drop our inventory um and then you know well after that video we'll move on to enemies so thanks for watching and stay tuned for our final video of chapter two.